Hello and welcome to another Ask Nera to Joy video. We have Ali back with us here today, Alessandra, and it is about six or seven weeks ago we saw Alessandra last, so I'm excited to have a look at her skin today. She's been really good and diligent with her home care regimen, uh, so her skin is looking really good. We can put in a past picture from when we first started working with Ali and you can see how much her skin has improved over this time. So I'm, um, I'm excited to get started with Ali, so we shall, we shall get going. I'm going to cleanse her off with the K cleanser. Oh, it feels so good. It was uh, quite a lot of extraction, that first treatment that we did on Ali, and uh, her skin feels so much better. So we got rid of a lot of that congestion underneath she still has a little bit but we've um, but it's so much smoother because I can feel it and and it looks really good what we did do with Ali is we did take her off some um, foods and that was dairy in particular and uh, she's um, I think been pretty how have you been with your foods Ali actually really good you've been really good yes yeah. so see it just it does pay off when you are doing what you're supposed to be doing for your skin because it, your skin is just an indication of what's going on on the inside. So if you continue, if Ali would have continued eating her dairy and doing uh, eating the foods that, that, that was a type of fat that her body doesn't digest, then what would happen is later in life she would have very likely a high cholesterol. So your skin is just a reflection of what's going on on the inside. It is the largest organ of elimination. So it is telling us what's going on. And because the area where, where Ali was really congested was the cheeks and this mid cheek area, which is a small intestine. So we've got the stomach up high, the small intestine, around the jawline is the large intestine. So it usually starts in this area and then it will start to spread down to the large intestine as that also gets affected. And, um, but she's been much better and you can see she had quite a lot of extraction. I know I really did a lot of cleaning on her and I remember last time she left, she was really spotty and uh, so her recovery time would have um, been a few days. She would have probably four or five days of just uh, healing from extractions. So when take off the cleanser. Now the other thing that Ali said when she first came in today was she said to me her skin's starting to break out a little bit because hormonally this is that time of month for her where her skin starts to get a little bit more spotty. So if, and I said to Ali, I said, well, if this is the worst of your skin this time of month, then she's doing really great because her skin looks so much better and it feels so much better. It was very surface dry when I first met Ali. And so she had surface dryness, she had congestion. It is just a much brighter, a much prettier skin that she has right now. Okay, so we've cleansed off Ali's skin. I'm going to do an exfoliant on her skin now. Okay, so we have the exfoliating mask and as you can see, I have just a dob of healing gel with it. Uh, Ali's skin is not super duper sensitive, so I'm not going to dilute it too much on her, but I do have a dob of the healing gel that we're going to mix together. You wanna make sure when you are mixing, anything that you're not doing it directly over her eyes, just in case something splashes into her eye. It is always a really good idea to have your clients keep their eyes closed anyway, because just in case something splashes and gets in their eye, it's just a safety rule that we should all have our clients keep their eyes closed when we're working. So we're just gonna work this in for a little bit, but her skin feels so good. Really impressed, this is great. Now again, what we want to do, we want to make sure we get under any fine facial hair. So this area out here on the cheek and out by the ear is usually an area that can get quite um, congested. So you want to make sure that you're really working in that exfoliating mask and getting under any fine facial hair on those che that cheek area. So I just worked it in for a few minutes. 
It doesn't have to stay on the skin a really long time. I don't want to set up a, a sensitive slate because of what I'm going to be doing hereafter. I want to make sure that her skin's not too sensitive because I am going to be using some of the fruit acids on her a little bit later. So, uh, so we're going to take that off now. Cooler water to remove it. Add a little bit too much water in my sponges, so you don't want there to be too much water. So I don't want anything to run into her eyes. Okay, so we've removed the exfoliating mask. I've got a little bit of healing gel I'm going to put on the skin now. Whenever you do uh, anything that has a little bit of glycolic on the skin, it does make the skin feel a little bit tingly. And of course, if I was adding steam to the exfoliant, it would also make the, it would activate the exfoliant and make it a little stronger. So I always like to not irritate the skin too much in the beginning of the treatment because number one, there's no need. And number two, I want to keep her skin calm and able to accept the different treatment products that I'm going to be putting on here after because we have several different things that I'm going to be doing. So we don't want to create a sensitive slate at all. So we're just working in the healing gel for a minute. Then I'm going to be putting on a little bit of my Q flavonoid. I'm also going to be putting on a little bit of retinol and I'm just going to work it into her skin for a few minutes. I want to help. Uh, she doesn't have an abundance of scarring. She's just got a small amount on her cheeks. So I really just sort of want to work some of the flavonoid in just to feed it a little bit, work in some of the retinal serum, and, and then I'm going to be doing some extractions on her. Now at this point, I could put the steam on her skin. I've worked the healing gel in a little bit, so I know that if I put the steam on her skin now, it's not going to be too stingy because her skin has calmed down now that we've removed the exfoliating mask and also putting the healing gel on her skin, it's really calmed the skin down a lot. So we are now going to work in a little bit of the Q. The Q flavonoid feeds the skin a lot of nutrients but it also is a brightener and it's all part of the brightening treatment. So when we're doing anything to lighten and brighten brown spots or scarring or any form of melasma, discoloration, we want to make sure that our Q is part of the regimen. What makes up a Q flavonoid? This one here has got arnica in it. It's got vitamin K, it's got vitamin P. Sweet almond oil. It has um, the vitamin K and has a little grapeseed extract, which is uh, also all part of this complex, this vitamin, uh, flavonoid vitamin complex. Okay, so there we've got our Q on her skin, worked it into the skin just for a minute. Now we've got our retinal serum. I'm going to use a little bit of that. Now if Ali's skin was a little sensitive, I would add some healing gel to her skin right now as I'm working in the retinol, but her skin is not sensitive at all and it's not really surface dry like it used to be. It used to be really, really surface dry, so she's come a long way with her skin. Her skin looks more youthful, it looks younger, it just, it's not as congested as it was. I think the first time I worked on Ali, I must have spent maybe at least 45 minutes, I think, just extracting her skin. And she had quite a lot of congestion. So it was not just on her cheeks, but I think it was down under your chin area too, wasn't it, Ali? Yeah. Yeah. So there we go. We've just worked the retinol in here. Now this, at this point, you could use some steam. It would be nice to have the steam to heat up her skin, not too close to her face. We don't want to make her skin sweat. We just want it to be, to work it in a little bit and to soften her skin. And that's what steam does. It just helps to soften, it helps to infuse a little bit. So we would use a little bit of steam now as we work in these treatment serums. I'm going to put a little bit of eye gel around her eyes. So we're just going to work that eye gel in around her eyes for a minute.
Now, as I know a lot of you in uh, beauty school, you do your extractions first before you do your massage. I do my massage before I do my extractions because I like to soften the skin. I like to prep it and prepare it for what I'm going to be doing hereafter. So it's really important for me that I work in treatment serums and then I use warm towels and then do my extractions. But I know that uh, there's different ways of doing things and as long as it makes sense to you what you're doing, then that's what's important. So it's, uh, it's, this is what I do because in my mind, this is what makes sense to me. So now we've worked in those treatment serums. So again, it's just the Q flavonoid. It's the retinol serum. She has a little bit of eye gel on, worked it into the skin for a few minutes. It would be also nice to have a little steam going at that time when you're doing that treatment. And now we're going to remove the bulk of it with some warm towels. Now we have a tag here, so we don't want the tag to be touching her skin on the towels. We're going to do our extractions. I'm going to be putting some goggles over Ali's eyes, bring the light down, and we're going to, uh, to do some extractions. So we have worked in some treatment products into which was a retinol and a little bit of the Q flavonoid, worked it in for a few minutes. And now I put some eye gel around her eyes. Uh, we're now going to do a little bit of extraction on Ali. So I'm going to turn on the light, bring the Maggie lamp over, and we're going to start. She's got her goggles on, so she's ready to go. So I'm just having a look here under the Maggie lamp. Um, her skin looks really good, as I said. I mean, she, her skin's very, very clean. It was not like this before. I mean, she barely has anything to extract on her forehead at all. Um, I mean, I could count on one hand the things that I'm, ex I'm extracting on her forehead. So we're moving on down. Um, again, I'm moving over to her nose area. It, you know, it doesn't matter where or how you start your extractions. Again, it's your own personal thing. So some people ask me, well, do I start on the nose? Where do I start to do my extractions? And it's really up to you. It's what's comfortable for you. I usually, I. 99% of the time start on my forehead, on, on the forehead, and I will then often move down to the nose or I'll start down one side of the face. So I will say that the chin is usually the last area that I do, and, uh, and that's, but that's just how I work. So we're just doing very light. She just has a normal amount of blackheads down on the nose area, um, not very much. Her skin is very, very clean and uh, she's been, as I said, she's been really good with her regimen because I can tell by looking at her skin. So now we're moving over here onto the cheek and I know we can slip in one of the old photos of what her cheek looked like before. I'm gonna ask that the cameraman come on over here with his camera and so that you can see through the Maggie lamp what it looks like, uh, what her skin looks like at the moment. So we're, we're looking at Ali's skin through the Maggie lamp and you can see she doesn't have a lot. She has a little bit of extraction, but she doesn't have an abundance like she did that first time. And she's much better down around the jaw area there too. She's not, her skin's not as irritated. It's just much, much cleaner. So I'm going to steal the Maggie lamp back from you so I can do, um, do some cleaning here and one here has quite a lot in it so you want to make sure when you are extracting that you are if you're going to be extracting the skin you want to make sure that you get it all out and uh, and that way you know it's going to heal really well
Actually, it doesn't hurt at all, so you're oh, really? fine. Oh, really? Oh, good. Okay, and I'm just going over them a couple of times. I just want to make sure that we've got it all out because I want her skin to heal properly. And see, often when you go to brush it away, if it doesn't come away in a clean sweep and it's hanging on, there's usually it's saying that there's still more in there that you need to get out. very often you have to leave the area for a few minutes and then come back to it because then you can see once you come back to it if there's still stuff in there that needs to come out. So she still has a little bit more. This one here needs to come out. You've got to make sure you get that core. Well, actually that wasn't a little bit, that was still a lot in that one that needed to come out. Once you get that blood and that clear liquid, then you know that it's clean. And there's no more infection coming out, you know it's clean. Sometimes I just like to go back over the ones that I've done just to make sure that I have got it all out. Okay, so we've done a pretty good cleaning there, but you can really see down on her neck area here, it's so much better than it was and it's it's much, much cleaner than it was too before, which is so great. Okay, so what we've done, we've finished extracting Ali's skin. I like to stand sometimes when I'm doing the chin, especially if the, I know there might be a little congestion underneath. Her skin, and Ali just said to me too, that her skin was, it was nothing. The extractions were nothing compared to what we had done the previous uh, couple of times. So it, uh, it's much cleaner, it's much better, and that's great because that's what we want. Um, her skin is just so much cleaner, it's, it's looking really good, and, uh, and I'm really happy with her results. So what I'm doing is I'm just going over the skin with just a uh, refreshener. It, uh, it's just to sort of clean up the skin a little bit. Then what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting an AHA on her skin. I do want to shrink those pores a little bit. I'm going to be putting an AHA on. It is going to be one that's designed especially for oily skin, as Ali's skin is an oily skin. And it, uh, it's sometimes a lot of people get very confused about what kind of skin they have because they have the oil underneath and they, they, get, they break out and they get congestion but then they get dry on top which is what we call that outer layer is what we call the subcondition. So a true oily skin does not have surface dryness and surface dryness is just when you're using products that are too stripping on the skin they're drying the outer layer and that doesn't allow oil to get out so it's a huge problem for someone who has an oily skin. So it's very, very important to make sure that you always keep the skin soft and supple and you're not drying it out. You cannot dry out oil by using a foaming cleanser or using something that's drying and stripping on the skin. You always have to be using 
products that are very gentle and that keep the skin soft and supple so that the oil can get out when it needs to get out and that you're not drying that outer layer because a dry outer layer will make an oily skin worse and it will also make the pores larger because the bacteria, dead cells and sebum that builds up inside a pore, if you have that dryness on top, it can't get out. So it's really important to keep the skin soft and supple so that the, the skin can stay clean and that's what keeps your pore size small and it's what helps to get rid of uh, um, congestion under the skin, which is a huge problem for a lot of people. So we've just wiped that over. Okay, so now, now what I'm going to be doing is we're going to do the normalizing formula, which is an AHA that's designed for an oily skin. I'm gonna put it on Ali's skin. It's gonna make her skin a little red in color. It's gonna burn a little bit. I'm only gonna leave it on her skin a couple of minutes and then we're taking it off. And what this does is it helps with the oil activity, but it also helps with the, the scarring. I like to do my AHAs after I do extractions because now the pore is clean and now I can shrink them a little bit. So here we go. A pore will never close up completely, it's not supposed to, but we want to shrink them and you can absolutely shrink pores and they will stay that way if they stay clean. And if you're using treatment products at home that stimulate fibroblast cells to help keep your skin firm. So it's going to sting a little bit on Ali. And as I said, we are only going to leave it on her skin for a couple of minutes. Now remember, whenever you're putting anything on, an oily skin in particular, you want to get under that fine facial hair on the sides of the face. So going in upward motions is really important as going in down. And we want to get under that chin and really do well there with our AHA. Okay, so we're just going to leave that a couple of minutes and then we'll be taking it off with cool water. Okay, so we are going to take the normalizing formula off the skin. Again, it's an AHA that's designed especially for an oily skin. It helps with the marks, any scarring. It helps to heal the skin, but it also helps with pore size. It helps with uh, any infection underneath. It's a really great product. So we're just removing that with cool water. Her skin is still going to be stinging even once we've added the water and we're now removing it. It is still going to be a little stingy on her skin. I'm going to put on now a little healing gel. And we're just going to work that into the skin. But her skin is so much better than it was. And now what we're going to do is we're going to be putting on a mask. Alrighty, so we've got the healing gel on Ali's skin and now I'm going to be putting on a mask over top of that and this one is called the purifying mask. And it's very soothing, it's very calming and it's going to be our mask we're putting on her skin. Here we go. Oh my God, that feels so good. <laughs> so nice because it's cool. Feels so good, yeah. Her skin, your skin is so much better, Ali. It's really good. You're doing a really good job of taking care of it. Thank you. Because Ali has these beautiful long eyelashes and I'm getting a little mask in her lashes as I'm putting this on around her eyes. She's got gorgeous eyelashes, they're so long. Okay, so what we have, we've got the purifying mask on her skin. I'm gonna put a little bit of eye gel around her eyes. We're gonna leave it on her skin for about eight minutes and then take it off. Okay, so we've got the purifying mask on Ali's skin. I put a little bit of eye gel around her eyes. I'm going to put on uh, a little gauze over her eyes, put some pads over her eyes, and I'm just going to show you something that I like to do sometimes in the winter months. So what we've done is I've done the normalizing formula on Ali's skin after I did extractions. I have now, I've taken it off, only left it on the skin a couple of minutes. It does sting a little bit. It really helps with the marks in the skin. It helps where there's been congestion or it is designed especially for an oily skin. And then we put on the purifying mask on her face, a little bit of healing gel first, then the purifying mask. I put double layers of a gauze over her eyes. I've got goggles over her eyes as well. 
And now I, this infrared lamp is something that I use just to act as a catalyst. I have it at quite a distance, but sometimes it helps a mask to penetrate. And I like to have it and use it more in the winter months, especially for an oily skin. So I'm going to put it at quite a distance at her. I'm only gonna leave it on a couple of minutes. Because we've done an AHA on Ali's skin, I don't want it to be too hot on her skin. I don't want anything to be too hot on her skin. I just want, um, but it, it, as I said, it does help and act as a catalyst to the purifying mask that I have on her face. So we turn, you turn the lights on always, whether it be your Maggie lamp or your infrared lamp, you always turn it on away from the face. And then you can bring it on down. You don't want to have it directly over the face, but you can have it at an angle like this and you are shining it just at quite a distance from Ali's face. You're shining it just on her skin there so that we have it at about there. That's perfect for her. If um, you could also put a little bit of a lip balm on her skin, just something, as I said, I'm not going to leave it on her skin a long time. It's only gonna stay in a few minutes. It does feel a little bit warm. It is a nice added bonus to have in your treatment room in the winter months in particular. And if I had not done an AHA on Ali's skin, if I was working on maybe a teenager, that I didn't want to do something as strong as I've done on Ali with the normalizing formula, I would have the lamp on the skin for a little bit longer. But I am only going to leave it on Ali's skin just for a few minutes. And this way, as I said, it acts as a catalyst. I've covered her shoulders, her neck. We're just going to leave it on there just for a short time to act as that catalyst for the purifying mask. So about, uh, about four minutes, I'll be back to take, remove the light. So we're going to remove Ali's mask right now. We left the infrared light on over top of her mask just to act as a catalyst to the mask. We left it on just about four minutes. I often, after I do extractions, sometimes I like to use ice. I do really like these ice pads that I work with and I'm not showing them on Ali's skin today, but you have seen me in previous videos when I do the ice packs. Someone where I've done a lot of extractions and the skin is really irritated and ruddy, it really calms the skin down quickly and you move it around the face quite quickly, holding it about 10 seconds on each spot. So, so I like to also work with ice and especially when I'm working on agnetic skins. So we're just going to remove the mask now I'm taking the bulk of the mask off onto sponges. It, if you uh, have a business where you are doing all your own laundry, that when you work with treatment products and removing treatment creams, it's best if you can take off the bulk of your product onto something disposable so that you're not going to clog up your, uh, your sinks and your, destroy your washing machine. So the creams and that do build up and the film does get on the, the washing machine as a bathtub does when you put oil in the, your bathtub. So you want to make sure just to, for longevity, you want to uh, and not have problems with your sinks, you want to make sure that you remove the bulk of your treatment products with disposable items and that way you're, um, you're going to save everything. It's going to last you longer. So we're going to remove the excess with a washcloth and I'm going to cool these down. We don't need them to be too hot. So we have removed, we've removed the mask. I'm going to put a little bit of healing gel on her skin, on Ali's skin and then I'm going to put a little bit more retinol on her skin and uh, she'll be going home tonight to go to sleep because it's quite late over here. So there we go with our healing gel. Her skin looks so nice and clean, looks fantastic. And just a little bit of the retinol serum directly on her skin tonight. And Ali's all done. So thank you, Ali. Thank you for coming back in. It's so great to see you. Mm -hmm. And you're doing really good with your skin. And if, as I said, if this is a, the time of month where it's more broken out, it's, it's looking really fantastic. So you're doing a great job. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. 
Uh, this will be Ali's final video treatment that we're doing on her today, but we will post out some photos on the Instagram, on the social media, my social media, so you'll be able to see how she's doing and uh, we'll keep you all updated. So thank you for joining us and we'll see you, see you again soon. Bye-bye.